I usually hold my mug in my left hand, but the design is always on the other side. Every time. <laughs> Hello my loves, welcome back to another video. I'm Ashley and today we have one a hell of a life update. <laughs> I thought we'd do just the kind of coffee catch-up situation that I am very fond of and give you this update because it is going to affect my channel in some ways and also just to tell some story times along the way because why not? Because, as you will have seen from the title, I am moving and I'm not just moving anywhere <laughs> I'm moving to Scotland, I am going to be living in Edinburgh <laughs> I cannot believe it and I'm gonna put this down before I scold myself because it's hot. I cannot believe it. I genuinely, it's so surreal to me. <laughs> so honestly, if you're just here to be nosy and that's what you wanted to hear, feel free to leave because the rest of this is gonna be one hell of a babble. But I, <laughs> oh my God, in approximately two weeks from when this video goes up, I will be moving to Edinburgh and Will I ever be able to continue that sentence? I don't know. The reason why I'm freaking out about this so much is because I've only ever wanted to live in Edinburgh. I've been on a couple of trips to Scotland, one of them to Edinburgh and one of them to the West Coast. The West Coast was actually my first trip and we visited lots of different towns and cities around the place that we were staying. Every single day we would go to a different place just to explore and I absolutely adored it. That was when I was maybe 15. I can't actually remember my age, but I was a teenager at the time and I just, adored it so so much. I felt so at home even though I'd never been there and we were visiting so many places. Every single place I went to I just felt comfortable and at home like I said. And then I visited Edinburgh I think in 2017 into 2018 because I went for the new year. I think it was those years and I stayed there for maybe I feel like 10 days or something. It was a pretty random time but and that's when I just fell completely head over heels for Edinburgh and again I just felt completely at home and it was the first time I've ever actively wanted to live somewhere that isn't just this house. <laughs> so I have always lived in this house. This is my childhood home. I live here by myself now and I've never gone anywhere else, which makes it terrifying. <laughs> it's terrifying to go for your first ever move in your life to a different country. When it comes to stuff like this, I seem to have a go hard or go home mentality because a similar thing did actually happen with my trip to Edinburgh. So to rewind, when I visited, this was around the height of all of my mental illness problems. <laughs> around that time in my life, I was really, really struggling with all of them and I had pretty severe agoraphobia, which meant that I couldn't get to the bottom of my street without having a panic attack. And yes, I went to Edinburgh because it was just somewhere that I had always longed to go. I was absolutely terrified of public transport and the idea of trains was my worst nightmare because I've always been scared of not getting off at the right stop and ending up in a completely different city. Like, what do you do in that situation? And even now I look back on me going to Edinburgh during that time and just thinking, how on earth did I manage that? I used to cry at the bottom of my road. And I went to Edinburgh as my first train trip. And I don't know if that gives any indication to how much I do go for something when I want it, <laughs> that I just managed to power through all of that and go completely by myself, like I did the train journey by myself and just met my friend there and then had one of the best times I've ever had. I absolutely adored the place. We would walk absolutely everywhere, every single day. And I remember when I left, I was sobbing my heart out when I got home because even though I do love this house, I just really felt the loss of Edinburgh. I really did. And the only way that I really calmed myself down is by promising myself that I would go back. To add on to that, Ever since my first trip that I mentioned when we went to the West Coast, I have always wanted to live in Scotland. As I said, instantly it felt like a second home to me. And at that age, I didn't know what that was. I'd never felt that before. I never knew that was a thing that could happen. But I remember saying to my dad, I'm going to live here when I'm older. And even he remembers that when I said that I'm going to be moving to Edinburgh, he was just like, you've wanted to for so long now. And I'm surprised it's something that he remembered as well. So that was really lovely for me because it kind of, validated the somewhat fantasy feeling that this has for me. Yeah, ever since I was maybe 15, I have said, I'm going to live in Scotland someday. It didn't matter where, I just knew it would be somewhere in Scotland. But I've always seen it as like a far off dream. I saw it as an end goal, as in like when I'm 50 onwards, <laughs> somewhere to live and retire to, that kind of thing. And I'm doing it now, <laughs> which is why when you put all of those things together, I'm just like, this is so surreal to me. <laughs> 
And it came about because I could really do with actually leaving this house, not because of anything dramatic or anything, but it's been in the back of my mind for ages that I could do with just moving out and finding a place of my own completely from scratch. And while I do like the city that I currently live in, I currently live in South Yorkshire, I do like my city, there are certain areas I absolutely adore, but it's just not the same feeling. <laughs> it's really not the same feeling and it could just be because I've always lived here and so it's pretty normal for me, but I don't feel the need to stay here. I feel like everything I love already is the extent of how much I'm going to love the city. I feel like there's not really too much more for me to explore or even do. And while my family is here, I don't know anybody else. I don't have any friends that I see on a regular basis here. And so there's nothing really solid that's keeping me here. Not even my job, I work from home. I can just take my work with me, which I feel so, so thankful for because I couldn't have even predicted that this situation would come up. I thought I would be here for at least another two years because back in January, I was still doing university. <laughs> And I left university for many different reasons. There are videos on that, I'll leave a link to them down below, but I thought I was going to have to stay here for another two years while I'm in university. And so I thought I would be in this house for another two years. But when I left uni, that was kind of the only thing that was tethering me specifically to this place. But then there was one very specific day where it just seemed like all of the signs that the universe could have possibly sent me were hitting me in the face. <laughs> So around this time, I remember quite a few of my friends had been hinting or like nudging me towards moving to Scotland for no particular reason. I remember being really confused because I hadn't mentioned anything about moving, but people kept saying, when you come to Scotland, when you come up here, when you do this. And then on this day in particular, I was on a video chat with Leanne and Jean, actually. We were working together because we all work from home. We were just keeping each other company. And so during this, the conversation of living in Scotland came around. And it wasn't anything in particular. At this point, I hadn't even considered moving to Scotland. It was just a case of you know, vaguely interested, came up in conversation because they live there. I can't remember what was specifically said, but I just remember something dawning on me. The idea of living in Scotland was actually contextualised in terms of the costs and how you could actually get up there and stuff like that. It started to like wheedle into my brain that it's not actually an impossible task. And then my dad knocked on the door and I was like, wasn't expecting you. He doesn't come around overly often or anything. So I was like, why are you, what are you doing here? And you know, there was a whole bunch of things that he came around for, but one of the things he said was, I think you should start looking for somewhere else to live because of the stuff going on with this house. And when he said that, it just felt like a weird slam in the gut of realization. <laughs> because like I said, all these things had happened around the same time. And I was like, I really feel like there's a sign here somewhere. Whatever you believe, whether you believe in signs of the universe or whatever it is, it was just something that kept coming up and it was kind of itching at the back of my brain and I was like, well, if I have to look for somewhere else to live, why not? Why not just go for it? And so I did. And now I'm doing it. <laughs> and so here I am, approximately two weeks away. Still feels completely surreal, doesn't quite feel like it's actually happening and I don't think I'm gonna believe it until I'm actually on the way there. <laughs> It is going to be one hell of a process because I currently live about five hours away. I think it's a four and a half hour drive, but like you have to stop in the middle. So it would be about five hours. And basically what's going to happen is I'm going to pack up all my stuff. I'm going to have removal men take all of my things ahead of time. So I think all of my furniture and books and everything are going to arrive at my flat about three days before me. And then I will go up on the following weekend. I'll be living in Edinburgh. <laughs> Now, something that is a little bit strange about the situation is that I actually haven't seen my flat in person, so I will be moving into a flat, but with the COVID restrictions and everything, which have only just started lifting, I haven't been able to go up. I mean, it would be difficult for me to go and visit anyway, because like I said, it's like a four and a half hour journey up there. I haven't been able to go and view flats. I've had to do everything virtually, just kind of judge the flats on virtual tours. And I did settle on one based on that. And so it's going to be really, really strange and really anxiety inducing actually that I've not seen the flat before I arrived there to live there but I've seen as much of it as I can through all of the various virtual methods and so when I arrive there all my stuff will be in there and it'll just be a case of settling in. <laughs> I had to do a lot of reassuring of myself that like even if I don't like the flat I can move again at some point but 
yeah, it's it's a very strange situation. We'll see how it goes. I also feel strange about the fact that I am downsizing considerably because this is a full house and I'm going into a flat. I actually think that's going to be a benefit for me because this house is just far too big for me. I really struggle with the maintenance of this house because it's just so easy to leave things around and not have it be in my way. And the tidying, like having to do every single room, every single time, it's just a lot. It's a lot for me to live in. And so I do think that just having my own little flat will actually be a big benefit for me. So hopefully that is the case, but yeah. Bit of a weird process, <laughs> a weird process indeed. But it is a process that I have been going through nonetheless. And so if you've been watching any of my recent weekly reading vlogs, if you've noticed that they've been weekend vlogs more often than not, or there's just been like huge gaps in the week. It's because I've been trying to arrange this. <laughs> this is what everything has been hinting at, whether you've noticed it or not. When I said in my June TBR, don't actually know how my June reading's going to go, as ambitious as I've made it, because big thing happening. This is said thing. <laughs> When it comes to my content, I am going to be pausing the weekly vlogs for a bit because I just do not want to keep up with that throughout this process. I've already been struggling just in terms of like anxiety and trying to be perky enough to like film during all of it, but I'm not going to be weekly vlogging throughout the course of June, but I have replaced my Monday videos with other videos. So you'll still have the same amount of videos it's just not a weekly vlog. I am, however, hoping to vlog the moving process and just bring you one big moving vlog. So do let me know what you would like to see as part of that. And I also might possibly do a moving FAQ to kind of do after I've moved in and once I've settled in a little bit and can tell you more about how the process went and stuff. So if you are interested in that as well, do let me know and I can see to arrange in that once I'm up there. But yeah, otherwise, I think that is pretty much it. I feel like this was just me like fangirling over Edinburgh. <laughs> I'm also hoping that Scottish people aren't just rolling their eyes at me because I know a lot of people get really excited over Edinburgh and they're just like, oh my god, it feels like this to me. And I'm just like, I know I'm not Scottish, don't worry. <laughs> I'm not gonna start claiming that it's in my DNA or anything like a lot of people do. But um, I just adore everything I've seen up there and I'm hoping to make it my home. Well, I am making it my home, I guess. <laughs> See, it still just doesn't feel real. I will say though, I'm really excited for what it means for my weekly vlogs when I do start them back up because we're gonna do so much exploring of Edinburgh. I'm so excited to document everything. I feel like I've kind of just hit a lull with my weekly vlogs over the past year or so because obviously a pandemic, we couldn't really go anywhere for a year and everywhere I have been, I've just kind of run it to the ground and done everything I can do and vlogged everything I can vlog and now I'm gonna have so much to document. <laughs> I get to explore a new city and even beyond that, the whole moving process, like there's just, I'm so excited for the content and all the photos and the bookshops that I get to visit and just, it's gonna be good. It's gonna be good, I'm excited. Incredibly anxious, absolutely terrified, but I know it'll be worth it. But I will just stop babbling now. There's my big news. And I hope you enjoyed the story times that came along with it. So I will leave off this video here. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, then remember to leave a like and a comment so I know that you're here. If you're not subscribed already, then please consider doing so. Down in the description box, you'll find information to, I usually say the books I've mentioned, but I haven't mentioned any. So you'll find information to Patreon, social media, other bookish stuff, lots of different things like that. So be sure to check it out if you haven't already. But for now, I hope you're having a lovely day and I shall see you next time with a new video. Bye. Thank you.